Welcome to the first installment of the SPP usage series. This is where I'm going to attempt to give you a better idea of how to use the segmented project planner in creating your segmented projects so you'll get perfection in them. We'll start out today using the layer tuner, which is a large side view dialog of a project. And we're going to talk about developing a shape of a project. So I'm going to use the shape of bowl function. And simply speaking, it's just a sketch pad. You can, the red dots represent the actual data points and the blue lines are curved, smooth curved lines to join those points together. Important pieces on the form up here in the upper right hand corner is the position of the mouse when, when you're on the diagram itself that is. Or excuse me, Y starts at the top of the object at that point and measures positively downwards. X measures from the center line out to the point on the object. If you want to make an object taller move a point up or move a point down. You can move a point either by dragging, clicking on it and dragging it or just click near it and the point will be moved to wherever the mouse is. And just below the mouse position is the project size. So that's the size that the program thinks the current project is. This is just about almost 11 inches tall and about 10 inches in diameter right right now. <clears throat> As I said, you can move the points anywhere you want to move them. That's with the left click. And with the right click, you can add a new, a new data point wherever you click it. So I've added a point there. I'll right click and add another point there. Best to use no more points than necessary to describe your object. That way, when you start trying to make the curves exactly the way you want them, you've got a much easier job. If you've got too many data points, then they just get in the way, make it more difficult for you. So, you can move a data point, you can add a new data point, you can delete a data point, just click on the point to identify it, and it'll click it. That click on the delete, and that'll delete it. If you click it again, it'll, it'll delete the next one down the line. So that would be that one. And I'll put that point back in place. <clears throat> it's also a good idea sometimes to take a, your a different look at your object. This is a item that I got from Ray Key a few years ago, and that is to turn it upside down and see what it looks like. If it looks good upside down, then you've, you've got yourself a good shape. Now, you might need some help. And here's where I think I, I call the design assistant comes in. Click that. And we get a little help on the proportions of your project. The green box, there's two of them here. There's a tall one and there's a squat wide one. Right now we're closer, the, the project that we have is closer in agreement to the tall orientation than it is to the squat or, or orientation. And that's why the line is darker and broader. In one case it's actually dotted. The closer we get in the height of the project to matching the height that, versus the width of the project, I should say, to matching that rectangle, then the darker and broader becomes a line. So now the, the green line has actually become black. That's representing the ideal ratio between the diameter and the height of the project. Now in the red we have an upper line and a lower line there. That represents the placement of the maximum diameter of the project. So we have the upper one here, it's almost black. 
So we're in good agreement there as, as to where that should be. Final thing are the blue lines at the bottom representing sizes of the, of the foot of your project. So if I bring this over here, then that's in, proportionally anyway, it's in full agreement with the golden mean. Doesn't mean it's a good looking object, just but it does mean that it's in, it's in proportion to the golden mean. So you can use that whenever you want. It's a little bit of a design aid. <clears throat> now you don't have to follow the golden mean. Another statement from Ray Key is that uh, if you use the golden mean in, in at least one of your dimensions in the project, it's likely to be a success. If you can get two, even better. But sometimes you actually want to break the rule to get some shock value, get people to stand up and take notice of your project. <clears throat> and we've got another way that yet that we can use Shapeable, and that is to copy some other design that you found somewhere else. So for that, we start with a picture, and I will locate a picture that I want to copy. This would be a project that I made a long time ago. Need a reasonable good side view shot of a picture to make this work. So I've picked that picture. I'm going to say to use it. And you'll see down here I have instructions that says click on the left end of the widest part of the project. So we're trying to get the overall sizing of the project. Click the left side, click the right side, and then we do the upper left corner and the lower right corner. So it gives us back the picture filling the frame and dimmed out so we can use it as a background picture to trace over. This one's good, so I'm going to say got it. There's its name. We can change it to any other name we want. And how tall is it? This one was about seven inches tall. So now I can use that background. We've selected it down here previously. And we have a good agreement for the, the lower point here and a pretty good agreement for the upper point. But what we got here is the curve is not right. So I'm going to add a point with a right click there. That brings the bottom part in, in, into agreement with the picture. And I'm going to add another point right there. And I'm going to move this one out just a little bit. So something like that would be a good imitation of that project that I made quite some time ago. Once we've got the project the way we want it, then we can go create the project. So that's down here in the lower right hand area where I have the current knowledge of the diameter of the project and the height of the project and information about construct making a project out of it, a segmented project out of it. That's the height of the layers and how many sides we want in each layer. I like 12 sides in each layer. They'll be three quarters of an inch tall. And I can go ahead and generate that right now, or I can change the height or the diameter as long as this constraint property is checked. If I change the height, the diameter will change appropriately. Vice versa is true also. Change the diameter or the height will change appropriately. Unclick it, I can change either one independently. So, click to generate the project, give it a name, save it, and when I exit this dialog, the program will load the project and you're ready to start doing the rest of the work. 